time, Scoop. Not the nicest way to travel. Oh. Nothing broken, Lily. Lily? 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 Where are you? Ah, oh, Doctor. Arrived in one piece, I see. No, I mean, enough of that, Cardinal. Where the hell is this? No, actually, more importantly, where's Lily? You took the two of us together, where is she? You remain on the planet Earth, the year 1845, designated by the humans as the Victorian era. Still a rather primitive time in their development by our standards. Y yes, thank you, I can do without the history lesson. So, Victorian era, Earth, and what about Lily? Ah. Oh, don't give me an ah. A slight oversight on our part, I'm afraid. One might call it collateral damage. Collateral damage? Well, why isn't she here then? A fault in the time scoop. From what I can gather, it appears she has been shifted to an altogether different place in space and time. But that is of little consequence. What remains a priority is the task at hand. Do you seriously think I still care about your little time problem? Well, sorry not sorry, but no. I'm off to find her before you decide to mess things up anymore. Finding your companion may prove very difficult, Doctor. Especially without your TARDIS to hand. <sighs> Here. This tracer will allow you to hone in on the location of the time disturbance. It won't be exact, but it will bring you into the close vicinity. However, with your vast knowledge of this planet's history, the anomaly shouldn't be too hard to recognise. Right, yep, fine. And when I've finished here? When you have rectified the timeline fault, you may use this time ring to return you to your TARDIS. Only when the fault is resolved will the time ring allow you to return. Oh, I'd expect nothing less. And I don't expect I'll be getting any help from you lot in finding Lily, will I? Regrettably, the matter is not of our concern. Yep, thought as much. Alright, clear off. Obviously got work to do, haven't I? Good luck, Doctor. For all of our sakes. Always so overdramatic. Right, now, let's see. There we go, tracer up and running. Now, where exactly is this time disturbance then? 15 miles away. Oh, at least you lot could have done with drop me somewhere nearby. <sighs> anyway, long walk ahead. London town, here I come. A ghastly smell. Ah, good day, sir. Oh, good grief! You startled me, Papa. Oh, I do apologize. Finding oneself in such a disreputable place makes one on edge as it is. Well, I do hope your journey to my humble establishment is worth your troubles. What may I do for you today, then, sir? Sit, sit, please. A stylish trimming of the hair, or perhaps a soothing skin massage. Well, I do seem to have acquired quite a stubble over the past weeks. I think, first of all, a shave. Ah, an excellent choice, sir. It's certainly a humble establishment you have here, Barber. Oh, indeed, sir. Indeed. But believe it or not, the gentry still come from Fleet Street and beyond to receive the closest shave they've ever known. Well, I'll be the judge of that, I'm sure. Mr... Todd, sir. Sweeney Todd. Now, let's begin, shall we?
Cheers for the lift pickles. I wish I could give you something in return, but, uh, well, I'm a bit strapped for cash at the moment. Oh, don't you worry, Doctor, don't you worry. I'm just thankful you managed to fix my cart, to be honest. <laughs> Still don't know how you managed to sort it, though. Uh, what was that thing you used? Anti... what was it? Yeah, uh, I'd best keep quiet about that, eh? <laughs> Otherwise, you know, everyone will be wanting one. Oh, my lips are sealed, Doctor. <laughs> are you sure you're all right here? Perfect, thanks. Seems like this is as good as it's gonna get. Well, good luck with, uh, uh with whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> and the same to you. Come on, walk on, walk on, girl. Right then. Oh, 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 brand new trainers as well. Oh, oh well, what can you expect? No place like London. Now, where to begin, Doctor? Well, that certainly sounds like a start. If I ever find you poking your nose into things that ain't your business again, I'll do far worse than that to you. Now, get lost. Hey, you alright? Here we go. Uh, we get. Oh. There we go, that's it. Thank you, sir. I'm grateful. No, oh, don't mention it. I'm the doctor, by the way. Anthony. Ah, nice to meet you, Anthony. Hope nothing's broken. That bartender had quite a swing. <laughs> no bones broken, don't worry. I'm just thankful there was someone kind enough to help me up. The locals haven't exactly been that welcoming so far. Locals? Not from round here, then? Definitely not, no. Fleet Street's not really a place for someone like me. Especially at my age. Oh, Fleet Street. Is that where we are? You... Don't know. Well, I wasn't exactly checking the signs on the way in. What's brought you here then? Well, I suppose you might say a mystery of sorts. Ooh, now there's a coincidence. Never ignore a coincidence. Could be just what I came here for. You came to investigate too? Yeah, you, you could say that, I suppose. The name's John Smith, inspector from Scotland Yard. Sent here to sort out a tiny problem with time. And boy, was I lucky to run into you, Anthony. What's the lowdown, then? What piqued your interest? It's my father, you see. He came to Fleet Street a few days ago, and... Well, he never came back. Well, it's not uncommon. People go missing all the time. Of course, that's what I thought at first. My father isn't the most trustworthy or reliable. He's got himself lost a few times on his trips to London. But usually when I've come to look for him, I've found him slumped over his ale in a local tavern. But this time was different. Go on. Well, from what I've been told, back where I live, he's not the only one. Lately there's been quite a number of people disappearing after coming to Fleet Street, never to be seen again. Now that's got my attention. Could have something to do with the time disturbance. Where have you looked so far? Well, just the tavern. Like I said, I'd usually find my father in one and thought it was worth a look. I tried asking about the other people that had gone missing whilst I was in there. They didn't seem to like that. Yeah. People usually don't. They prefer to avoid them questions, keep themselves to themselves and hope things will pass them by. But not us, Anthony. Now then, I've been sent here to fix a problem with time, so combine that with the fact that people are going missing, and that could mean that there's some sort of displacement going on. Displacements in time leave residual energy, so... We're going to need a horse. A horse? Ah, my glistening friend. You've done wonderful work today. Another satisfied customer. No. No. Be quiet. You must stop this, please. Let me go. Uh, no. I won't relent. You're killing me. You have to stop. Shut up. I'm not going to tell you again. Be silent. <sighs> Much better. I... I'm the one in control here, and don't you forget it. Time sensitive. Here. Yeah. They found me. Well, he won't stop me. 
I won't give him the chance. In fact, he could be just what I need. You want to what? Borrow your horse. Look, just for an hour or two, no more than that, Pickles. Promise. Oh, well, I suppose I could spare her for a little while. We would be forever in your debt, so... Well... Oh, go on. Hey, I'll tell you how I did that thing with the cart. <sighs> all right, then. Since it's you, Doctor, but I want her back safe and sound, all right? You have my word. She's a beauty, she really is. <laughs> Oh, lovely to meet you too, Christine. <laughs> Her name's Charlotte, actually, Doctor. <laughs> uh, no. But easy mistake to make. You don't speak horse. <laughs> speak? Speak what? Uh, we'd better get going, Doctor. Not a moment to lose. Quite right. Hop on, Anthony. Oh, uh, with your permission, of course, Christine. <laughs> what a lady. Here we go. <sighs> we'll be back before you know it, Pickles. Whenever you're ready, Chrissy. Speak. <laughs> Speak horse. I still don't quite understand how the horse helps us in our investigation, Doctor. Oi, let's not call her the horse, like she's not here, please. <laughs> uh, exactly, Christine. Horse is right. Let's not forget him. Doctor. Right, yes, sorry. Well, you see, horses have this ability, kind of. Like dogs can perceive psychic apparitions, horses are rather sensitive to these little things called chronites. Particles released when there's an energy discharge of sorts. That's why you get horses popping up all over the universe, always stumbling into portals, time windows, you name it. So, lucky for us, Christine here will be able to sniff out any said chronites in the area and hopefully lead us to wherever it is the people have been banishing from. Right. Still don't get it, do you? Not a bit. Ah, don't worry. Just nod when I say stuff and ask a few interesting questions here and there. You'll be fine. Whoa there, whoa. Found something then, eh, Chrissy? Where about us then? Ah. Interesting. It's the local barbers. Indeed it is. What are we expecting to find? No idea. Something. Oh. Oh, ah, can you taste that? Ah, that, 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 that sort of metal tang in the air. Iron residue. Someone's been using a hell of a lot of power. Definite sign of people being displaced. I'm still struggling to understand your words, Doctor. What do you mean? Things are not good, Anthony. Ah, he's here. At last. Looks like we'll be claiming more than one customer today, my friend. No. I... I won't let you. Told you to be quiet, didn't I? Besides, you're not strong enough. I'm the one in control here. Now then. Time to promote our services to the public. What's our next move then? Oh look, they got a little pie shop next door. I love a good pie shop. Doctor, our plan? Hmm? Oh, well, I thought that'd be obvious, Anthony. I think we need to have a chat with our local barber, don't you? Hope he's in at the moment. Let's check. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? Please gather round, one and all. It is with great pleasure that I can announce my humble establishment has served its 99th customer. So, in honour of this milestone, I am offering the chance for my 100th customer to have a shave, free of charge. Oh, how convenient. Too good to be true, surely. Of course, there must be some sort of exchange for this exclusive offer. A coin toss. Ooh, the old coin toss. You, sir. Uh, me? Yes, you. You look like a respectable gentleman, sir. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Heads or tails? Uh, heads. No, no. Tails. Very well. Tails, this man has won himself a free shave, ladies and gentlemen. Fair deal, wouldn't you say, Mr... Doctor. And, uh, yes. I suppose it is. Lucky I was passing by, eh? Indeed. Very lucky. 
So, how about that shave then? You know, I'd be delighted. Excellent. Follow me then, Doctor. Come. Doctor, are you sure this is a good idea? Of course. I mean, come on, did you see that coin toss? Completely rigged. I saw a pie seller doing the same thing a few regenerations ago. He made it land on Tails on purpose. Therefore, the spider obviously wants me to come into his parlour. You're just walking straight into a trap, then. It's all part of the plan, Anthony. The plan? Which is? Not thought of that part yet, but don't worry, it'll come to me. Besides, look, I need a shave anyway. Got a bit of stubble around the cheek, you see. Oh, you sir? Yeah? Now, you wait here with Christine. Get ready to make a quick getaway. <sighs> right, Doctor. Keep the car running, Chrissy. Oi, none of that language, thank you. A lovely little place you've got here. Very cosy indeed. Ah, oh, thank you, Doctor. I do my best. Get out while you can. Go be quiet. Did you say something? Oh, nothing, sir. Nothing. Please, do have a seat. Certainly. <laughs> Ooh, very comfy. And steampunky, too. Love what we've added on the sides here. Well, I do like my tinkering. I didn't catch the name, by the way, Barbara. What was it? Todd, sir. No. Sweeney Todd. <laughs> Something funny. <laughs> Sweeney Todd. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic. Sweeney Todd. <laughs> There's no such person. All right, mate. Don't try anything. You've been rumbled. Come on, out with it. Uh, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, don't play the innocent. Who are you then? Because Sweeney Todd, oh, that's just an old English folktale like the bogeyman. The barber with the knack for slitting his customers' throats. <laughs> Made up. Often mistaken for existing, of course. But I mean, come on. Sweeney Todd. There is no such person. Not real. Oh, uh, having, having said that, that razor looks real enough to me. Whoa! Careful, Sweeney. You could have someone's eye out with that. Oh, Doctor, it's not your eyes I'm after. But you might just prove useful to me in other ways. No, stop this. Oh, now that is interesting. <laughs> Silent! No, no, I... I... Oh, very good, very good. Forget Sweeney Todd, more like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Two consciousnesses within the same body. Very interesting indeed. Very perceptive of you, Doctor. Oh, but very bad. Two consciousnesses in one body. No wonder there's a time anomaly in this time zone. Two people trying to coexist at the same time in the same space. How did that happen then? Who are you, Sweeney? I'm a Vex. Ah. Distant relative of the Vale. How'd you end up here then? It wasn't by choice, I can tell you. I'd gotten myself into a little bit of trouble. Skirted on the edge of the law, you understand. Yeah, a criminal. Go on. Upon a heist of mine, I was evading the capture of local authorities. And after coming into possession of a Vortex Manipulator, I was able to get away. Unfortunately, I wasn't familiar with the settings and I ended up here, on this backwater planet. Oh, but it was much more than that, wasn't it? You couldn't even calibrate it properly. So, when you materialized... I'd materialized around one of this planet's natives, a barber. Benjamin Barker. And there we have it. Two minds in one body battling it out for possession. I am the one in control. The human mind is weak. It has no chance against mine. But that's not enough. You can't just fight for control and try to suppress poor Benjamin. You're too unstable. And that's why you've been taking the people, isn't it? You take on the guise of Barker, but as a new barber, Sweeney Todd. Inviting people in, but taking them one by one. That razor, it emits a containment field, yes? Takes in the life force of all those you've taken and traps them in a state of purgatory. All to try and sustain this body. You're using their life force as a band-aid, a way to seal the wound. But it's not going to work. You're not sealing the wound. You're just 
stuffing it with things, hoping to block it up, but forcing it open wider, causing a fracture in time. I knew I'd be found eventually, I knew I'd be tracked down. But you won't stop this, Doctor. You're going to help me. With a time sensitive like you, I can fix this. I'll be able to sustain this body. Not how it works, Sweeney. It can't be fixed. But you can release the others. All those you've taken, they don't need to be trapped. And why would I do that? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Benjamin. Can you hear me? You can fight him, I know you can. Just hold on to who you were before all this. I, I can't, Doctor. You can! Stop this! It seems you aren't willing to cooperate, Doctor. Perhaps a show of force might bring you to your senses! <laughs> Time for some fresh air, I think. You're not getting away from me, Doctor! Christine? Time for that quick getaway. Quick, Anthony, get on. You found the missing people? Uh, sort of. <laughs> quick, Anthony, get on! You're mine, Doctor. Move it, Christine. Oh, so we're calling her Christine now. Whoa! Doctor! Sorry. Excuse me. Any plan yet, Doctor? Well, glad you asked, Anthony. Yeah. You see, Sweeney's victims, they're all in a state of flux. Trapped. And it's all thanks to that razor of his. We get that, we stand a chance. I'm sure if we ask nicely, he'll just give it to us, eh? That is, if he doesn't use it to kill us first, Doctor. He's gaining on us. Blimey, he's fast. We need to draw him away from the crowd, somewhere secluded. Uh, the docks. Perfect. Which way? Left here, then keep going straight on. Brilliant. You might want to pick up the pace, Christine. <laughs> Nowhere to run now. Time to use my secret weapon. <sighs> Which is? Words. It's too late, Doctor. There's no escape. Don't think so, Sweeney. Now, shut up a minute. I want to talk to Mr. Barker. No! He's too strong, Doctor. You can fight him, Benjamin. I know you can. You're stronger than you think, believe me. Just look at you all. Humans. You've gone through flood, famine, plague, invasion, and you've lived through it all. Indomitable. That's who you are. And all it takes is just one push. It's the last leg, Benjamin. Trust me. And then that's it. And I can rest. Then freedom. Then freedom. I promise. Very well. <laughs> Quick, Anthony, the razor! Snap it! No! No, don't! It's over. Hey. Well done. The last push, and you made it. Thank you. It's all down to you. You're free. And now... I can sleep. He's... dead. Yeah, the strain was too much on him. But, at least his last breath was his own. He was released. And and the others, Doctor? What about the missing people? They were all sustaining Sweeney's mind in Benjamin's body. When the razor was snapped, they were released and his consciousness collapsed, leaving Benjamin's body. The people were trapped at a point before death, but they're free now. Just like Benjamin. They're... they're dead too. My father. Yes. I'm sorry. But he'll be remembered. Hey, if it wasn't for him, you'd never have come here. I'd never have met you and we'd never have been led to Sweeney, would we? Eh? I suppose. Your dad's gone, but not forgotten. And now he's at peace. All of them are. We did good, Anthony. We did the best we could. And that's all we can ask for. I'll have to start anew. And I wish you the best of luck with it. You'll be brilliant, I'm sure of it. Thank you, Doctor. I hope so. What will you do now? Well, I'd better be getting back to the, uh, Scotland Yard. 
get my report in. You'll be needing a horse, I take it? Oh, no. Uh, I've got this time ring. Another of your contraptions? Yeah, I, I, I won't try to explain. Bit hard to believe, really. After today, I'll believe a lot more. This world has so much more for me to discover, so much more to learn. And you'll love it. Discovering lands untold. Uh, though, you wouldn't mind starting your discovery by uh, taking Christine back for me, would you? <laughs> of course. And the same to you, Chrissy. Well, goodbye, Anthony. And, uh, thanks again. Oh, Doctor. Yes? What should I tell people? Should they ask about the people who've gone missing and the barber who went mad? What do I tell them? Tell them a story. Tell them the tale of Sweeney Todd. Quite right, Christine. Quite right. Haha! <laughs> At last. Right. Now that I've solved your problem, it is time to sort out the mess you lot made yourselves. Arctron Energy Trace. It's faint, but it's good enough. Probably it's going to take a lot of power and precision. But don't worry, Lily. I'm on my way. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, something's wrong. Something's, something's very wrong, wrong. Oh, we're out of control. She's gone haywire. What is it, old girl? Ah! Something is really, really wrong. If I don't put her down soon. We'll be left drifting in the vortex forever. You have been listening to Doctor Who, The Demon of Fleet Street. The Doctor was played by Miles Taylor, with Jimmy Wolfe as Sweeney Todd, Anthony Ross Wilson, Pickles Michael McGee, Cardinal Hester James Blowers, Tobias Turpin James Woods. Sound design and editing Miles Taylor. Cover art. Marshall Tankersley, Music, Big Finish Productions, Theme Tune, Marshall Tankersley and Simon Bowser. Produced by Miles Taylor for Tailored Vision Productions.